Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make, Make it. it! Today on Make It, Devin's going to show you guys how he makes his own clothes. He uses many different tips and techniques, and he's been doing it for many years now, but he's definitely perfected the skill. So I thought it would be great to see the different ways in which he's done that to inspire you if you're interested in making your own clothes. So you have been making your own clothes for many years. That is affirmative. And you started off modifying clothes. Yeah, that was a few years ago. Yeah, many years ago. He used to just buy things to make his clothes unique, to add to it, or he'd alter them, cut sleeves off, sew sleeves on, put on cool buttons, and it's completely um, grown in his interest. So what are you doing now? Right now I'm using my peg loom, which I made yesterday. Okay. And I'm just trying it out for the first time. Um, basically the idea is you just wrap this uh, yarn around the pegs. And you can see here I've done it a bunch of times. And then once you get it to the uh, length that you, or once you get it to the top of here, you pull out. Ah, the first one's really difficult because there's so much tension on it now. But you pull out the first peg, to the second peg, to loosen it up. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> But once you pull out those pegs, you put them back in their holes. So how did you learn about this technique? Uh, I saw uh, a few photos of it and I've seen a video of it on YouTube. Cool. You made a scarf, haven't you? Yeah. with a. I was still weaving it, but it was a slightly different technique. Okay. Do you so, want to show us the scarf? Yeah. One sec. Uh, I can't just stop this. Okay. Well, once you start, you cannot stop the process. <laughs> I mean, you can. It's just a lot easier to just do it now. What are you making now? That's another scarf. Cool. So the other one isn't that great. So, now that that's on, that, all that fabric wow. that was up here is transferred onto here now. That's really cool. Yeah. And, uh, whoop. You can move it up. I can remember that uh, you learned how to knit when you were three. Yeah. You were really, really little and you learned how to knit and you've always been interested in creating these kind of things. So it's so amazing to see her progress. Hmm. And then once that's done, you just start going again like this around every other one. And then when you get to the end, you come back the other way. It's a very physical, physical activity. Yeah, I mean, luckily you really don't have to think about it. You can just kind of do it. Like, I could probably just be reading and doing this. So it's, you know. Right. It would be something really good to watch TV while doing, or watching a movie or something. Or chatting with somebody on yeah. Skype or something. Yeah, I've been talking to Neville a lot while doing this, so. Cool. That's that. It's really thick, too. Like, feel it. Oh, wow. It is really thick. Yeah. This would make a great blanket. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I could make anything this wide, it could be as long as I want. If I made two that were really long and sewed them together, it could be like a blanket. Cool. Devin made a scarf through with this technique, and it is right here. That is cool. I love the end. Yeah. This looks so professional. Thanks. It looks very warm, too. It's pretty okay. It's all wool. Nice. This is a different technique with yarn. This is a hat I'm working on right now. It's not done yet. If I, it doesn't really fit me yet. No, it quits like a beanie. It looks like an acorn cap. Yeah, but it'll it be will. soon. It, uh, I'm using a technique called knot binding, which wow. is a Scandinavian technique. And it's basically, you know, you just take the needle and pull it through the next loop and then pull that through that loop and it makes a knot and it's just all a bunch of knots. Wow, I never heard of that before. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not very common now. Okay, so that's called knot binding, and the other, the scarf, and this particular scarf is made from a technique called... Weaving. Weaving. Okay, cool. Well, this one's on a frame loom, and this is a peg loom. Okay. Oh, I remember your frame loom. Yep. Devin um, just got back from a trip to Ohio visiting his girlfriend, and while he was there, they made a bunch of clothes. Devin actually makes his girlfriend clothes. How cool is that? He's going to show us the different things he's made... Um, both here and at his girlfriend's house, I was blown away at how much his technique and skill has just been perfected. I love these items. So show, what's the first one you want to show us? I'll show you my trench coat first. This one I actually made here. 
yep. a little while before I left. And this is all hand sewn. No sewing machine touched this whatsoever. It looks uh, really good. I mean, it was really wrinkly uh, before. Yeah. Wow, I love that. And I remember uh, you dyed this, didn't you? It was yeah, white? it was white before. What was that process like? Well, I just got the dye and I filled it with like five gallons of water in a b bucket and then I just soaked this overnight. Cool, and you could buy that right in the laundry section, anyone listening, yeah. if you feel like dyeing any of your clothes. They have whether... to be cotton, though. Oh, good tip. You can't dye natural, you can't dye artificial so This clothing. was a tablecloth that I bought for like 75 cents at a thrift store. Wow. Did it already have that like line in it? That other yeah, yeah. That's why I got it. Very cool. Right when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, wow!" Sure. So when you saw it, you knew you could envision the shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that takes definitely a skilled eye to be able to spot the potential of things like that. That is awesome. I love that. I love the strap around it, and I like the sleeves. Yeah, it's pretty okay. And then there's this part, which is kind of hard to see. Oh yeah, I love that part. And so, what did you you sewed on? Oh, very unique. Cool. This was we used this to buy. This was a sewing machine. Okay. But the other stuff was a sewing machine. That's because, you know, this stuff is a little bit more heavy duty and a little bit more difficult to get through. Uh, yeah, you've been messing around with sewing machines since you were tiny. Yeah. You were probably four or five when you first started playing around with one. Evan's the one in the family who everybody gives their items with holes in. <laughs> Devin sews everything for us. This is something else I made out of a bed sheet wow. and a matching pillowcase that I got again at the thrift store for maybe a dollar or something like that. I saw the picture of that online. Very cool. I love this. I love this idea. With the belt. Tighten the back. Awesome. I love that. I enjoy it as well. Cool. Wow, that's so cool. It's all cotton. Yeah, and you lined that, it's didn't three you? Three layers, of, yeah. This is a, a hood found in a burial site in Scandinavia. Okay, you modeled it after that. Yeah. There's uh, these hooks on here, which can close up for my face in case it's really cold. Cool. And it's three layers of cotton, and it's lined on the inside. Everything I make is lined, usually. And it's all square because they could only weave squares or rectangles. Even this part's a square. See? Mm, cool. And they kept everything square in case they had to cut it up and make it into something else. That is... talk about planning ahead. That's like the ultimate recycling. Here's a pair of pants that I made. I didn't have a lot of fabric over there so I just kinda got all the biggest pieces and sewed them together. Those are cool. Yeah, they're really baggy. They're like parachute pants. Nice. And if I have shoes on or if I have really high socks, I usually just tuck in the pants, so it's kind of like... Yeah, I saw. I had a picture of those that I posted. Yeah. Those are awesome. I love the colors. Yeah. They look so super comfortable. Yeah, they're pretty breathable. <laughs> nice. The last piece I have is a um, Viking-style tunic, which is four layers of cotton canvas. It looks heavy. It is. And this always usually has a belt to accommodate it. What interested you in making your own clothes? What was the inspiration? Everything I liked was too expensive to buy, usually, so. Cool. There we go. I love that, Dad. That's great. Yeah, I like it too. I want to make one out of wool next. It'll be itchy. Yeah, well, this is usually what you wear under oh, you wear tunic. Some, yeah, that makes sense. Linen. Yeah. This one took forever to make because each side is two layers of cotton canvas, and I had to make every piece two layers thick and then turn it all inside out and sew it together. Even this part up here is two layers. This black part is sewn to the blue part, and it's two layers thick. Wow, that really just improves the durability. It just makes it look nicer, too. So Devin showed you uh, several different ways in which he's made clothes, different techniques. He uses sewing machines, um, his hands, looms, he weaves, um, he's knitted, crocheted. What's your favorite form of like making clothes? Mm. 
I mean, it's kind of a difficult question to answer because it's not like there's a thousand ways to make, you know, everything is different and um, it's kind of hard to choose just one because it's not really the same. It's not, you can't just generalize it because there's so many things you have to make. Right, right. You've made your own shoes before. Yeah, I have a few pairs of shoes upstairs. Should check those out. I have some uh, sandals that I made out of some t really thick like rope. Do you want to go get those for us? Yeah, we can show here's people? a pair yeah, of cool. sandals that I made out of some uh, Cecil t Cecil twine, and I'll show you how, how they go on. They're my first pair of shoes I ever made, so they're a little bit uneven. I remember you wearing these around England. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we went to England and Devin, uh, Devin loves to be barefoot. It's the most natural way to be. He's been barefoot 99% uh, of this time in life. Um, it's just a much healthier way to be able to uh, walk upon the earth. We do a lot of what's called grounding. And that's when you stand outside barefoot and you, you can gain strength and health and healing from the energy of the earth. So grounding is not what it is to most people for our family. Our kids have never been grounded in the traditional huh. sense. However, our kids know how to ground themselves outside. That looks cool. So yeah, this is a Japanese style. So one thing that's really interesting is I think most of our viewers will think that this is so unique. Like, I noticed a couple of teens in England were really curious and they were staring at your shoes. And so how, do you, how does it make you feel if people criticize or do you even get criticism? I don't care about it. I mean, I don't care about what other people think. It doesn't really concern me at all, but uh, in England I was standing outside a store and some girl walked right past me and she took a photo of my shoes really slowly. Like, it was like, I mean, I don't care. I'm glad she did, but she did it so terribly. It was like, she like stopped and it was like, I'm looking right at you. You can just ask to take a photo. <laughs> I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> Right. Well, it is unique. You don't see a kid uh, or a teen walking around with clothes that they've made themselves very often. In fact, I don't think I've ever known one personally yeah. or seen one. Yeah. Our family gets a lot of uh, stares because we are ourselves and dress like ourselves. No, I love that hat. That's wool. It is so cute. 100% wool. Yeah, I'm really grateful that you have the freedom to be able to pursue what you want in life. Mm -hmm. Me too. I think a lot of people actually somebody posted recently on Instagram I posted a picture of something you made and the girl said how did he learn to sew and how does he have time for that she didn't know you were unschooled mm -hmm. many kids would maybe have an interest like this if they had time on their hands to be able to pursue it but it's kind of a luxury in our culture to have time to do what you want because everybody's kind of too busy doing everything they think they should be doing and kids and teens are being forced to do schoolwork instead of following and pursuing their passions. So life is very different for you than the typical teen. Yeah. You made Nev some cool clothes. I'd love to show some pictures here. Yeah, I mean, they're, the all, they're all on Facebook, so. Cool. Why don't I post right now the different things that you've made for your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. So what did Nev like the most that you made her? I'm not sure. I made her like a, um, well, her mom made some of it and I made some of it and she made some of it, but I think her favorite is a, uh, it's a black and white houndstooth skirt and crop top combo. Why do you like doing this? Well, I mean, I could just spend a few hours working to a forest scarf that's handmade or I could just spend a few hours making it and then you know I could say that I made it it feels more self-sufficient I don't have to depend on other people and you know these skills I'm not just learning while I do this how, how to do this but how to do everything like it like you know even building houses a lot of times you know a lot of the old Scottish houses were woven like this, and a lot of primitive buildings, and I mean, all clothing is basically just a form of weaving. It's just super tiny, you can barely even tell, because it's like, smaller than thread usually, but... Would you ever have any interest making clothes for other people and selling it? For my family, and if maybe if people wanted to commission me to make some stuff, 
commissioned me to make some stuff, I'll do it. But, so, uh, here's an arrow quiver that I made a little while back. It's all woven, as you can see. An arrow quiver is uh, basically some kind of device to carry arrows with. So this wow. one, you know, it can either be like this on my back so I can take them out like that, or I prefer to have it like either like this or on my belt like this. I prefer it this way the most. It's just the easiest way. And uh, then I have this one, which is a little bit more detailed. This is all made out of goat skin. This one has some of the uh, arrows in it that I did the video on. I'll take oh this yeah, out one of our earlier episodes of Make It, you can learn how to make an arrow. Devin has a video about that in the series, earlier on in the series. And we have so many unique and exciting and cool friends that know Devin's passion. So hey, it's not strange for us to get a call or a message that says, hey, I got some goat skins for Devin. Have him come get them. In fact, in fact right? <laughs> earlier today, my friend just messaged me, hey, Devin. I said, hey, he said, you want a mink? And I was like, what? A, mi a mink is a, a type of like animal, like a large rodent. It's like a type of, of a weasel. And I was like, what? He's like, uh, they're like, yeah, I, we found a dead mink. I'm, you know, I'll give it to you in a few days. And I was like, okay. So now I'm getting a mink soon. I'm excited. It's dead. I'm well, going to skin it. Maybe do you, we'll have you heard it. of a mink? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll show that. Have you heard of a mink coat? Yeah. People have buy mm -hmm. mink coats. I mean, I wouldn't be into buying a mink coat because it's cruel and I wouldn't wear animal products. However, this is a really eco savvy way to honor that animal, isn't it? Because the mink was dead. Yeah, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the skin and I'm gonna take the bones too. What do you think you're gonna do with them? With what? The bones. I'll probably make needles and stuff out of them. Arrowheads. Anyways, so this is um, a very old, 5,000 year old style arrow quiver. There was a replica, uh, well, there, the this is a replica. The original one was found frozen in the Italian Alps. Quite possibly one of my great grandparents had this because I'm very Italian, um, and it was found in a very cold climate. So the um, the, the hang on. There's two flaps here to keep the arrows protected. There's that one, and there's this one here, and the arrows go in there. And they found some decorative twine on on the case, that's why I did that. This is so a uh, same act actually came from the same goat, I think. This is a sheath for a knife that I made here. And this knife I didn't use any electricity whatsoever to make. Except for I used some lights <laughs> to light up the place because it was a little bit dark. So for you that don't know, Devin is also a blacksmith. He is completely self-taught. And he loves to make knives, and he has an Etsy shop. Here's a javelin that I made a little while ago, or right before I left for Disney. So you forged? I forged the head, yeah. And then you made the stick, you carved it, and what are all the, the stripes are burn marks, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. How'd you do that? With a blowtorch. <laughs> really? Okay, cool. It, just, it works really good. I brought it out in the woods and just went on walks with it, throwing it, and then picking it up. <laughs> Okay, and then this is the biggest weapon that I've made. This is called a brodashi. This is, um, I believe it's French medieval weapon. And, I mean, I, I mean, you can just, I don't really have to explain anything to you. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite deadly. What was used for war? Uh, yeah. Or I was mean, it hunting? This doesn't look like a hunting weapon. No, this weapon. is not by any means a hunting weapon. Right. This was used for killing people. And, um, it took me probably about an hour to make it. Or maybe a few, but no, nothing was cut, you know, it was all forged and shaped by hand. It took me maybe a few hours, actually, but... Uh, actually, I don't know if you can pick it up right here, if I get it in the right light. There's a rainbow, you can kind of see it there, oh, from, yeah. from heat treating it and making it harder. It changes the color of the metal, and I got it to be a rainbow right there. That's awesome. <laughs> kind of goes from red to blue. How do you sharpen it? Uh, I mean, there's like a million ways you could. I just use um, a file, or and then a grindstone after. Wow, that is really deadly looking. <laughs> yeah, it's... If there's an apocalypse, I have this handy by my bed so I can just take it if there's an apocalypse, but... The zombie apocalypse, we are all set. I mean, I am. <laughs> oh, thanks. Here's a haversack that I made out of some goat skin here. A haversack? Yep, and it's basically just, you know... Is that the goat's tail? Yeah. 
Oh. And there's a feather on here. And I wove this strap. Very cool. But yeah, it's just, you know, like a big pouch. And keep in mind, guys, that we did not kill any of these animals. No. Nope. These were all uh, skins or made from animals that people gave to Devin after they had deceased. So um, I think that's important to share. Yeah. I'm vegan. The girls are vegan. We are all for animal rights. However, I think that Devin is using the animals after they die for something really important and special. And that's like the best way to honor something. And that oh. is something, that's something actually you taught me, Dev. Just, you know, it's a waste if you just, it's like recycling. Once it's gone, there's no more use whatsoever to it. So, you know, if I were to not use it, it would be wasting it, in my opinion. Exactly. Well, you are surely an inspiration to me and I'm sure many people watching. So thank you, Dev, so much for being here on this episode of Make It and... I mean, I live here, so... <laughs> you do live here. And you've been gone for six weeks at, at your girlfriend's house. So yeah. we love having Devin back. Devin brings a certain creativity and energy in our home that just makes everybody want to create. And I love these part of the videos. So you can really inspire people to do some pretty cool stuff. So thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, comment below of what you'd like Devin to make. Do like a like a tutorial on hey, I'll do anything. Just suggest it. It has to be natural though. Yeah. Very cool. Well subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks guys, and never forget, even when it doesn't seem like it, all is well. Yeah.